Matching up cameras during a live event is an essential task for any professional broadcast technician, and the Colorfly is Scour's perfect companion for anyone who wants to work seriously with life changes for brightness, contrast, colors, and gamma. And in this video, you will get insight into what the Colorfly can do, and I will demonstrate how you can shade cameras from multiple brands with a single controller. The Colorfly has 18 buttons and 8 encoders and they are all complete with nice OLED displays that will show you exactly what the buttons and the knobs do. This makes the controller so flexible and you also have the four motorized faders on the controller and they are great for flexibility as you can have multiple layers of functionality assigned to the faders and they will adjust when you change the layers around. So the Colorfly comes with a number of default configurations and you should check the link in the description if you want to see what's available to you. And these configurations will get you started with a minimal amount of configuration. So you're quickly going at it, right? But the real power of Skyway appears when you go into the configuration of your devices and you can add new devices or you can change the behavior of buttons and faders and knobs and add a new menu layer. So we provide you with the tools to do all this, to, to make it work exactly as you want. And finally, we should also mention that the Colorfly is not limited to shading operations like controlling iris of your cameras. You can actually assign everything that is available in any of our many, many device cores to this controller. We support many of the most popular camera brands like Panasonic, Sony and JVC. And we also support a lot of PTC camera brands like BirdDog, Avonic, Newtek and many more. And if you want to route sources for your monitors, you can also do that with the Colorfly. So just add an AJ or Blackmagic or VMix or TriCaster device core to your controller. The first application of the Colorfly we will look at is a custom configuration. So I have here a Panasonic UE150, BirdDog P4K, Panasonic U40, 40U and a PDC Optics camera. So it's really four different cameras, different manufacturers, very, very unique situation that calls for a custom configuration. So let me show you what we can do here. And typically on the Colorfly, we will assign the four faders to have immediate access to things such as iris. So let's look at this. We have the multi-view here where you can see the first fader will adjust the iris of the Panasonic camera. And the second fader will adjust the iris of the bird dog camera. And um, of course, this is the kind of control you will have when you're watching the live feed and you want to adjust all the sources to have the same light level and so on. You see, I can do the same here for the video camera and also the PTC optics camera. Some of these irises will be a little bit stepping. That's because this is how it's operated in the cameras. Some of them have like 15 steps of iris or 10. Some of them have a much more fluent range. That will depend, but Skahoy controls it all. The next thing we'll look at is white balance control. And on the Colorfly, the left side of the controller is usually used for any settings on each camera, like white balance, like exposure, like color settings, like um, master black and so on. So while the faders were the direct access for all four cameras at any time, this is where we have a camera selector. And the camera selector is awesome because you see how the OLED displays are really shining. They are putting in a label on the displays telling you exactly what camera we're choosing. So Panasonic, Bird Dog Camera, Vadio, PTC Optics, it's all on the OLED displays. That's typical Skahoy. We do that all the time, all over the place. So there you see some of the DNA in this company's way of thinking. And um, going to the Panasonic camera, we want to adjust the white balance. And I already moved myself into the white balance menu. So typically we also have some kind of menu and you can see if I go to the exposure, I have access to some exposure related settings. But now let's focus on white balance. We have auto white balance execute up here. So I'll just press and hold that button. But first I want to zoom in with the camera and that gives me a chance to show you another awesome feature of Skyhawk controllers in general, four-way buttons. So this button will actually allow me to zoom in. Just look at the picture here. And if I press the low edge of the button, I'm zooming out. Pretty cool. And the pan tilt just next to allows me to pan and tilt a little bit. So let me just see if I can notch my way onto the target. Obviously, hopefully you have guessed that this is not meant to be a substitute for a real joystick. Of course it's not, but it's really, really helpful for the PTC operator, sorry, the RCP, the shading operator, to move himself towards a position like this. I'm pressing and holding, and we're seeing the camera picking up the correct white balance at this location. I could now zoom out again and frame the camera if I want, and I could store this whole thing as a preset by pressing and holding this button. It's now stored as a preset that I can recall from the camera. 
The Colorfly is connected with one Ethernet cable for signal and power, and it does not need to be connected to a computer to work like a USB device would usually do. And this means you have complete freedom to place your controller where you need it the most, and that would be in another room or even in another city. The Colorfly is the perfect shading companion for the ATEM Mini Extreme. And in this case, we are looking at a default configuration. And that default configuration makes a lot of sense for the ATEM Mini Extreme series especially. You have direct access to all the parameters for all the eight cameras. So you don't need to fiddle around with the mouse to get the look that you want on your Blackmagic cameras. Let's take a look at how this is implemented. And it kind of follows what we did with the PDC cameras. The faders will provide you direct access to Iris and Master Black on cameras one through eight. So let's first look at this. We have the ATEM software control here. And as I'm moving this fader, you see that I'm adjusting the iris on the first camera. By the way, that camera is unprogrammed. Why can I see this? Because there is a red color on the um, intensity bar just next to the fader. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And uh, it's a warning, right? So that I know, mm, be careful when you adjust the iris on that camera. Don't experiment too much because it's live. And this is the preview. Uh, because it's green. Now, let's, uh, let's just look at this. So you, as you can see, I have access to, to those uh, four iris controls immediately at my fingertips. I can also adjust the master black. So if I turn the knob up here, you'll see there's like a horizontal movement of camera number one for the master black adjustment. And that's handled by the encoder. I can press and hold to reset. And I can also press uh, multiple times to go between a coarse and a fine mode. Actually, let's just look at that. You see small steps bigger steps. Yep. So what if I want to adjust cameras five through eight? I just press this little selector here. You see on the four-way button, I can press the edges. I go forth and back. There's almost like a little rhythm to this. And if I go even further, mm, I get this because I don't have any cameras that uh, is um, 9 to 12 and so on. So this configuration is actually extended beyond only the 18 Mini Extreme. We support up to 16 cameras in this configuration. But of course, our interest is only cameras up to 8. And um, if I had to do this in the software control, I would need to scroll a little bit to access those. So now you can see if I use both hands here, I can move all these faders up and down for camera 1 through 8. That's pretty cool. We always like to see motorized faders move. That's so awesome. So if we look at the settings for these cameras, once again, we are over here on the left side of the controller. And we have a camera selector in this case, labeled camera 1, camera 2, camera 3, camera 4. That could, of course, be changed. But today, that's how we do it. This gives us access to lift uh, settings up here. And uh, I can go to, um, to the menu called white. Here I have uh, gain settings for uh, luminance red, green, and blue gain for each, um, yeah, for, for camera number one. If I go to camera two, I have different values. So now let's just try to mess this up a little bit. And uh, here you can see as I go forth and back, I get those detailed settings right there. The Colorfly is just great because it gives you the immediate access to the most important things for, you know, in, in live context. And it gives you detailed access on the left side by selecting the particular camera you want to go and adjust here. We can go through these menus and you find gamma settings, image settings like hue, saturation, contrast, details, and so forth. And down here you have uh, more settings like you can actually trigger color bars and you can also reset everything, which we will just do. Now that we messed this up, you can see if I press this button, it's all reset. All these things are also happening in here. So let's just quickly check to, to kind of see the correspondence. If we go back to camera number one, yeah, there you see the fiddling with the scroll bar, right? And I open this one up. Now I, I can see all the settings that I have for camera number one. And um, the uh, gain Y parameter, you should see that move over there to the right on the screen. And um, for red and green, it's uh, if I press the uh, encoder down to have coarse steps, then I get quicker movement and so on. So uh, as you would expect, I can also, let's just move the saturation slider so you can see that happening. Again, all of what you have in the software broken out on the Colorfly to make it easy for you guys. If you want to know more about which devices we can control, then head over to our device core page on our website. You will find a link in the description of this video. And if you're looking for a more traditional form factor for shading, then check out our RCP. If you like this video and you would like to see more, I suggest you subscribe to our channel. And finally, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to write us. We would love to hear how we can help you out. Have a nice day.